Hey everybody, this is Midnight Update. I'm Seamus Byrne. Welcome to Thursday, 4th of June. <laughs> Day two of E3, 2009, uh, and we've been running flat out around this place, getting as much coverage as possible. Uh, obviously, I'm doing a lot of coverage for uh, written outlets, uh, which is a good thing because a lot of the things we saw today, uh, we weren't allowed to shoot uh, as it was all behind closed door meetings, very early looks at a lot of upcoming games. Some of the most interesting games that we've seen today, I'll uh, have a quick talk about a few of those. Probably the first most interesting game today uh, was over at the TK booth and this was Borderlands. Uh, this is looking really cool. I think uh, at first glance it looks like a bit of a Fallout 3 ripoff uh, but then when they started to really get in the details um, it's more the case that they've kind of really I guess taken a lot of clever ideas from a lot of different games that people know and love and they're very happy to, to talk about the games that inspired them to, to arrive at, at the game they've made. Uh, so some of the I guess some of the things that we saw were things like uh, loot drops uh, that you know cover uh, green, blue, and purple in the same way as well. Um, it's basically an action RPG, um, and uh, there's a really cool art style to it. At first, you kind of get a bit of that cell shaded uh, vibe, but it's more heavy black outlines. And the, the option that they've chosen to describe it uh, by is a concept art style, and it's quite a clever way of describing it. And, uh, and the whole thing has a really interesting vibe and uh, it's also got a good co-op mode attached to it. This was actually one of the things they talked about in terms of Fallout 3 inspiration was I'd love to have played Fallout 3 with some friends. Uh, and, and so that's kind of partly where they were coming from was creating this uh, uh, post-apocalyptic kind of it's this other world and you're, uh, you're a hunter for this you know, a legendary vault uh, is part of this concept. But ultimately, yeah, it's, it's a game that you can uh, jump in and out with four friends uh, and your experience and loot is persistent across both single player and co-op versions of the game. So this game really has a lot of cool stuff going for it and um, uh, I think they, they've really pulled together some interesting ideas. Um, some of the weaponry looks really cool. Um, we saw some tech effects that are attached to weapons uh, like electricity and fire and acid and. Um, and enemies also have directionality, so if you get around behind certain enemies, you can kill them easier than if you're shooting them head on. Um, a lot of cool stuff going on. So Borderlands, well worth checking out. Another game we got to see uh, more of a presentation on uh, was Quantic Dreams Heavy Rain. Uh, a lot of people anticipating this quite heavily. Uh, these are the guys that made Fahrenheit a few years back, um, and they're very, very story heavy company. Um, and uh, what we saw today was the presentation of, of a new sort of section of the game they've made available. Um, I guess it's one of the scenes that you'll be able to play in the game. Um, but uh, as David Cage, the creative director, uh, described it, that, that the way we saw the scene today uh, it may actually not happen that way at all or it might not even appear in the game the way you play it. Uh, so it, it's quite an interesting uh, idea. I think you should probably go and search for some details about Heavy Rain online because it's hard for me to get into uh, big details because it's kind of a pretty high concept kind of a game. Uh, but what we did find out today for the first time was that there will be about 60 sequences that you play through uh, in the final game and it will run to about 10 hours. Um, and literally the, the endings available in this game, uh, everything from you play four different characters uh, through the game um, and one way the game can end is that all of the characters can be killed uh, by this serial killer, uh, which is the main aim of the game is to uncover the identity of and, and catch this serial killer uh, called the origami killer because he leaves uh, little origami things in the hands of the people he kills. Um, but interesting game uh, and yeah, well worth going and checking out more details. That's going to be a PS3 only game. We also saw uh, Singularity, which is a new uh, basically, I guess you'd call it a shooter um, uh, from Raven Software. Um, and this has a lot of time-based mechanics attached to it. Um, but in the way that you might be a bit wary of that, because, say, Time Shift, where it didn't work very well, these guys have been quite uh, direct in the way the time mechanics work um, to actually control it. And that's something we discussed uh, in the session today was 
uh, was they they've managed to you know contain these time effects quite smartly so that you can uh, that, that it works well within the gaming context. Um, one of the interesting things we saw as part of this is the idea is uh, there's this island off the coast of Russia where some experiments were done in the 1950s um, into a unique material uh, that had sort of temporal qualities uh, and the whole thing went pear-shaped back in the 50s um, but now in modern day uh, you're working with people who want to actually you know, go back and harness this material. Um, and what takes place is that you actually find uh, the time in the game shifts back and forth between the 50s when the incident occurred um, and the modern day. And you have uh, time abilities that can actually age or, uh, or rejuvenate uh, items. Uh, and, and so there's lots of kind of puzzle components around uh, aging aging things to get them out of your way or restoring things to their former state so that you can then use them. Um, and then you can even use these aging effects on, on people you encounter. You can you know, kill people using these aging effects. Um, there's even things you can do with the, the time element to this is you can catch rockets and then throw them back uh, at the people uh, that are firing them at, them at you. Uh, there's even a special gun that uses uh, E99 is the name of this particular substance uh, and there's a gun that uses bullets made from this material and when you fire them you actually then get a, a slowed down version of time and you can steer the bullet uh, towards uh, the target that you're trying to attack uh, and that means around corners or whatever you like. So this is definitely yeah, a really interesting game and another one well worth checking out. Last thing we saw today was Alpha Protocol. This is uh, an RPG uh, coming out of Sega, uh, and it's also written by Chris Avalone, who's, uh, I guess, a very, very uh, big-time RPG writer. So uh, this is actually an espionage RPG, um, and they were saying it's going to be about 25 hours, but well, the, the cool thing with the espionage element they were saying is that uh, this is going to be an RPG where there is no good and evil kind of element. It's all about factions, and it means you can align yourself however you like uh, with the different forces within the game. So uh, uh, what we actually saw was a playthrough of a particular section, uh, or a couple of sections, um, and a examples in which uh, you could, as they, one of the guys described it, you could go like Bauer style and just go completely, uh, you know, aggro and aggressive with the people you encounter, uh, or you can go Bond style and be a bit more suave and, and uh, talk your way through situations. And the interesting thing they pointed out was in the two examples they showed, uh, one, you basically crack a guy's head in and he gives the information you need. Um, and in the other, when you talk and you're friendly to the guy, you also get bonus missions uh, and he even unlocks as a weapons dealer that you can use uh, to, to score some new weapons. But what they also said was if you go the original route, at first it seems like you, you don't get anything for it, uh, but later in the game you'll encounter people who heard that you decided to, uh, to crack his head against a, a barroom bench and they'll actually be more friendly to you for doing that. So uh, there was a, a good description that uh, one of the presenters used was uh, the game offers a lot of options where you can choose to either find instant gratification or if you uh, go the other route, then there'll be a gratification deferral and you will still get something out of whatever option you choose. So. Uh, there's also some really clever systems attached to Alpha Protocol with uh, with regard to weapons um, and information. Um, uh, that there's a, an intel system in the game where you can actually buy information or buy uh, services that will help you in the game. Um, a clever one with certain kinds of missions uh, was that you can uh, buy a, a dead drop of a weapon, say like a sniper rifle. You can you can pay to have somebody uh, you know place that within the map for you to find and use. Uh, once you're actually playing a particular mission, um, it's a really, I think it's a really detailed RPG that uh, that they've got on offer here. Um, there's like a perk system as well, purely based on how you play the game. Uh, you'll you'll get uh, what they refer to as mini achievements um, that actually you know give you some some buffs uh, in the game uh, for playing in in a certain way. Um, so yeah, definitely Alpha Protocol uh, is another hot title that we've seen here today. And that is all for tonight's update. Thanks for stopping by. You can join us this week around midnight LA time. And for more information, visit midnightupdate.com.